Okay, acid-base titration. This is what we did in lab yesterday. Um, it's applying solution stoichiometry, which we cover in Chapter 13, to a common laboratory technique called titration. So in a titration, we take a solution whose concentration we know and we react it with another substance in a solution where we don't know the concentration. Yesterday what we did is we used sodium hydroxide of a known concentration and we had what we were calling six down soda, right, not seven up, it was six down, that contained citric acid. And so the hydrogen ions from the acid react with, I'm sorry, yeah, the hydrogen ions from the citric acid react with the hydroxide ions from the sodium hydroxide and undergo a neutralization reaction. The net ionic equation for that is hydrogen ion plus hydroxide ion forming water. The sodium and the citrate were spectators in that. So here's titration in pictures. So here we have um, an Erlenmeyer flask with an acid in it. Um, the hydrogen ion is what is actually reacting, and so we're just going to look at the hydrogen ion. The, 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 um, the counter ion, the anion, is just a spectator, and so we're leaving it out for simplicity, for, for clarity. So here we have our Erlenmeyer flask with the acid in it. Here we have our burette with sodium hydroxide. The sodium is a spectator, so we're just looking at the hydroxide ions here. And we have an indicator in here so that we can tell when we get to the equivalence point. So as we add sodium hydroxide, as we add hydroxide, the hydroxide reacts with the hydrogen ion and forms a water molecule, which just blends in with all the other water molecules, right? And as we add more, eventually we come to the equivalence point where we've added the same number of hydroxide ions as there were hydrogen ions originally in the solution. That's where the titration is complete. It actually, that's the equivalence point to get to the end point so that the color changes. Um, we probably have to add at least one extra hydroxide ion, little tiny bit extra to get the color to change. Uh, the indicator is just a dye and the color changes at the appropriate uh, pH of the solution. So we carefully measure the volume of each solution. Yesterday what we did is we used a pipette to measure the acid, the soda, and then we used the burette to measure how much sodium hydroxide is added. We know the, um, we know the concentration of one of those solutions, and so then we can find the concentration of the unknown solution. Here's pictures instead of illustrations. Um, a solution of, of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide in the burette. They both look like water, but they are not. They're water with stuff in them. As we add the sodium hydroxide um, and get closer to the end, we'll see this pink swirling because as the sodium hydroxide lands, it is um, more concentrated right where it entered. It hasn't thoroughly mixed yet. As it mixes, it reacts and forms water, and the color goes away. When we get to the end, one drop will cause the whole solution to become pink. Phenolphthalein is a very common indicator used. So let's do um, a calculation for an acid-base titration. <coughs> The titration of a 20 mL sample of a sulfuric acid solution of unknown concentration requires 22.87 milliliters of 0.158 molar KOH solution to reach the equivalence point. What is the concentration in moles per liter of the unknown sulfuric acid solution? This is a chemical reaction. It's not a dilution. Do not use M1V1 equals M2V2. It's so tempting. And the tutor might tell you to do that, but don't. It's a chemical reaction. We need a chemical equation. So we've got sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and we've got KOH. So those are our reactants, um, H2SO4 plus KOH. 
Um, we have an acid and a base. We're going to end up with salt and water. I think the safest thing, though, is just look at this as a double replacement reaction. What are the ions in this? Well, you've got hydrogen ions and you've got sulfate ions. In KOH, you've got potassium ions and hydroxide ions. Anytime you need to do something like this in Chem 3A, a compound only has two ions. Just two. So don't, it's not potassium, oxygen, and hydrogen. It's just two. So then we swap the partners, and we see the H and the OH gives us water. And the other two, we've got K plus and SO4, two minus. So the charges tell us that this should be K2, SO4. It's the crisscross thing. I'm going to erase that because I need that space for something else. Is this equation balanced? No. Do we need to balance it? Yeah, we absolutely do. <coughs> when I look at this, um, there's hydrogens and oxygens everywhere. Um, so it's, I think it's easier to focus on either the sulfur or the potassium. Um, here there's one sulfur, there there's one sulfur, so he's fine, or she. Um, potassium, I have two Ks here and only one there. So I need to put a 2 in front of the KOH. If, if you're putting a coefficient here, you're going to end up with a coefficient in front of the water. But let's count it out here. Two hydrogens there and two hydrogens here. So I need a 4 in front of the water? No, I need a two because there's two hydrogens in the water. I need four hydrogens, but it's two times two. And then if you go through and check the oxygens, they took care of themselves. You gotta start with a balanced chemical equation. Now, we're gonna solve this just using solution stoichiometry. Yes, it's a titration, it's an acid-base reaction, chapter 14, but the technique for solving is chapter 13. So I'm going to take the information and write it under my equation. 20 milliliters of H2SO4. Okay, so I've got 20.0 milliliters of that. And I, it says I have 22.87 milliliters of the KOH. And it gives me a concentration of the KOH. 0.158. Don't write the capital M. Capital N stands for moles per liter. I had students in my second semester general chemistry class, Chem 1B, who still did not have a good understanding of what the capital M meant. Capital M is moles per liter. So here, instead of writing 0.158 M, like is up here, 0.158 moles over liters. That's a conversion factor. Okay, those are all the numbers that were given to me. What am I trying to find? The concentration in moles per liter of the H2SO4. So question mark, and the units I need there are moles per liter. Everybody with me still? This is like a bread and butter type calculation. This is a, a really common type of calculation. So for stoichiometry in general, right? Grams to moles, to moles to grams. You can always start with that and then uh, alter it to fit the problem. We don't have grams anywhere in this problem, do we? There's no need to go into that. The mole-to-mole -mole business in the middle is always going to be there. What do we have here about our known thing? We have a volume. We have a volume and a concentration. So here, instead of grams, we're given milliliters. This relates moles and liters. So what we're doing at least in lecture, is we're going to convert the milliliters to liters and then convert the liters to moles. 
what we're trying to find at the end here is the concentration of the solution. We need the moles and we need the volume in liters. They gave us the volume in milliliters, right? We can convert that to liters. Hey, let's do that right now. So that's 0 0.0200 liters. Those trailing zeros are significant and you need to keep them. This is not one sig fig, this is three. So that's liters. So what, do I, what else do I need? I need the moles of H2SO4. So when I look at my path for stoichiometry, I don't need that at all. I can just stop at moles. So I've got volume of KOH to moles of KOH to moles of H2SO4. Stop and plug that in an equation with this. Okay? So I'm going to take my, um, my volume here in milliliters and just refresh your memory, converting to liters. Put it like that so the units cancel out. Milli means 10 to the minus 3. So I put 10 to the minus 3 up here. And that gives me 1.02287 liters. Common mistake is that students will do that almost right and get 0.2287. But that's off by a factor of 10. Which isn't cool. Okay, 0 .2, 0 0.02287 liters of KOH. Um, so I'm starting right here with liters, liters to moles to moles, two arrows. I go liters of KOH to moles of KOH, and from moles of KOH to moles of H2SO4. I fill in the units in the denominator. So that my units cancel out. If you learn how to manipulate the units, you can save yourself a lot of thinking. Thinking is good, but thinking just for thinking's sake is not worth our time. So moles per liter, that's the molarity, that's right here, 0.158 moles. The number stays with moles. So 0.158 moles per liter. And then here the mole ratio comes from the balanced chemical equation. There's an understood 1 in front of the H2SO4, and there's a 2 in front of KOH. So it's 1 mole of H2SO4 for every 2 moles of KOH. Point zero two two eight seven times point one five eight divided by two. And it's a small number, but that's okay. So point zero zero, I should have um, three significant figures in my final answer. So one eight zero and keep two extras to avoid rounding errors. And the unit there is moles of H two SO four. Now, if you haven't finished the lab yesterday, this is the same kind of calculation that you needed to do. We just had citric acid here, and the mole ratio is different, but the idea is the same. The volume of the base times its concentration, so we're converting to moles of the base, times the mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation gives you the moles of acid. To find the concentration, we divide by the volume. Now, we're not adding the 20 milliliters and the 22.87 milliliters. We don't care what the, what the concentration in that flask is. We took a sample of this acid to determine what the concentration in the big bottle was. So we're just looking at the volume of the acid. So we're not going to try to make things more complicated. We're just dividing by this. So the molarity, um, the concentration, 
is moles of H2SO4 divided by liters of H2SO4. So the moles, 0 0.0018067 moles, divided by the 20 milliliters expressed in liters. And this ends up being 0 0.09033. And then I round that 0 0.0903 moles per liter. Or this is the one place, if you want to use the capital M, use the capital M in your final answer. But don't use it anywhere in here because it, it's a lot more confusing. Any questions?